Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, Tuesday here on this show, you know what that means. Last night, Monday Night Raw, which was the Go Home episode for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which is Saturday. I keep getting caught off guard by these Saturday pay-per-views. I don't like Saturday pay-per-views. But it's Saturday, and so uh, such is life. So we'll go over the Raw show from last night. Line up for Saturday and so much more. NXT 2.0 is tonight. Got a line up for that show. A lot of segments announced for that show. Seven segments announced. We have got Blood and Guts coming up on Wednesday. We have got AW Rampage SmackDown viewership. And also this, the domestic violence case. Against former WWE NXT and AEW wrestler Jake Atlas has been dropped. TMZ reported Tuesday Orange County officials canceled a Tuesday hearing following an investigation which, quote, it is the opinion of the writer that this case is not suitable for prosecution. The aforementioned documents were filed last week. The matter is closed. 27-year-old Atlas arrested May 23rd domestic violence charges after attacking his boyfriend in an incident that began at an Orlando, Florida bar and continued at a friend's house. Released by police that day, Tuesday was said to be his arraignment. He is recovering from surgery to repair a torn ACL. Suffered in an early January rampage match against Adam Cole. Reported earlier this month, he is not expected back in AEW, where he had just signed before getting hurt. He was not under contract with them, was working on a per-appearance schedule. As reported here... On Wrestling Observer Live, I might add. So anyway, we've got more news coming up. We'll have a lot of time for feedback, I think, here today. So text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. What's on your mind? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, we're back on the show. I'm going to wait till the next segment to go over Raw, because I like a lot of time to really go into detail on these Raw shows. It was fine. It was a John Cena 20th anniversary show. We'll get into that here in a moment. But we got a lot of big shows coming up, including everybody's favorite show, NXT 2.0. Which, this is interesting, everybody. I know you guys don't like talking about it, but I'll tell you why it's interesting. Because I think most of us who actually watch this show would agree that the last three... Episodes of NXT were much better than usual. I think we can all agree on that. You don't have to say they were great, but they were much better than usual the last uh, last three weeks. Were they all timers? No. Oh, you know what's funny is I, I could have sworn on Observer Radio last night, Dave. He said it was an all-time great show. That Get out of here. Dave and, said that? Yeah, I he did. I can't believe it. You want to text him and yell at him about it? I, I can't believe it. But anyway, so, uh, yes, uh, they were better than usual, which is not an all-timer. Because I would say that uh, Forbidden Door was closer to an all-timer than better than usual. But anyway, (laughs) the question is, is the show going to be better than usual tonight? Because it's back to being live. The last three weeks the show was taped. It was better than usual. Was that because it's been better than usual or because it was taped and uh, they did what they had to do? This show is live. We have got Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade versus Caden Carter and Katana Chance. Oh, God, I hope there's no promos for this. Oh, God. Indy Hartwell versus Kiana James. Can you see how excited I am for this show tonight? The fact that you Sanga. don't have to review it. <laughs> Sanga will be fa- I got to review it tomorrow and with Vinny. I got to review it twice, brother. Sanga will face Zion Quinn. Giovanni Vinci will face Ikemen Jiro. Nikita Lyons returns. Braun Breaker will go face to face with Cameron Grimes. And uh, Josh Briggs and El Virgino will be addressing their NXT UK tag team title win. So that's coming up tonight on NXT 2.0. And then tomorrow, we have got AEW Blood and Guts with Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, 
Matt and Angelo, Daniel Garcia, and Jake Hager facing John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, Wheeler Yuta, or as I like to call him, Claudio Castagnoli, Santana Ortiz, and Eddie Kingston. Plus, we will have another promo. If you didn't get enough last week, everybody, another promo from Christian Cage. There's a lot of fun stuff coming up. Wrestling has been sure fun lately, hasn't it been, Mike? It has been, actually. There is enough fun out there Damn in wrestling. right it's been. Yeah, I mean, look, regardless of any of the fights and the tribalism and the flag planting and all that sort of thing, if you look hard enough, and for right now you don't have to search high and low, it's pretty much delivered right to your computer screen with a few clicks no matter where you want it, there's something out there for you. Whether that be WWE, whether that be New Japan and New Japan World, whether that be Wrestle Universe, because you really like Maki Ito, so you got to watch Tokyo Joshi Pro and DDT and Noah. Everybody's got a streaming service. Everybody's got something going on right now. It's summertime, for heaven's sakes. Warrior Wrestling, AAW, GCW, Defy. The, I mean, the groups in California that are, are hot right now. I mean, there's something out there if you want it. You can spend every day online fighting and, and, and bashing people and looking to be offended about things. But when it comes to the end of the day, you can turn this show off. You can turn a lot of things off and just turn your social media off and enjoy the wrestling that you want to enjoy. Why are you telling people to turn our show off, Mike? Sometimes, You're the worst Brian, promoter. Sometimes you, you need to, as long as they turn it back on, on again. And, and I know you have the ability to turn people back on again. You know who's not doing well right now is Rampage. Well. Forbidden Door Go it's, Home Show. 422,000 well. viewers in a point one two. Oh man. This matches Rampage's series low in its regular time slot. So uh, this show's still suffering. Those preemptions, dude, you guys realize that uh, AEW was moved because the preemptions uh, killed them last year. And uh, the same thing is happening here. I think that, uh, you know, Rampage is the B show. I, lo I love the matches. I watch it every week. I devote a show to it on Sunday. I like Rampage, but it's absolutely the B show. And when you have a B show... And then the thing gets preempted over and over and over again. What happens is people get out. Listen to me, Mike. They get out of the habit. And once you get out of the habit, it's hard to come back. That's why I don't recommend people stop listening to this show ever. Get it into a habit where every day, no matter what, you listen to this show. On Sports Byline, on the Mightier 1090, on Twitch, on YouTube, on the American Forces Network. On the cable radio network, if that still exists. Wherever you're listening to this show, I think you can Wherever also Wherever you're it listening on, uh, to this show, Apple Music. It's Apple okay Music. to sometimes take a break. Never. Never. It's okay. Never. No. And if you're a commentator, never take a week off. You will be replaced. Well. Do you understand, everybody? Yeah, now, Wally SmackDown. Pip. Smack. Wally who? Wally Pip. You know who that is? I know who it is, but what does that have to do with my show? Well, you know, you never is he know. a guest today or something? You, you decide to step out for a minute, and, you know, somebody becomes Lou Gehrig and plays in 2,130 consecutive games and takes over your spot. This is another reason not to take off when you don't need to. Friday Night SmackDown did uh, 2.231 million viewers, which is up 6.6% from the previous week. Second best audience for SmackDown since April 1. Although, the show did finish second to last among the major networks in terms of total viewers. So you know those people that go, why do you guys talk about the demo all the time? Why do you talk about AEW's demo? Just talk about the, the, the viewership. Well, if you want to, the show did horrible. If you want to talk about the demo, it did great. So maybe we should talk about both, right? Hmm, seems like that'd be fair. So anyway, uh, that's the deal. And uh, up 13% year over year. So we say this every single time there's there's a renewal coming up. If you blokes think that this thing ain't going to make mountains of money on the next television renewal deal, think again, kids. Think again. Well, I like all the people saying uh, who are maybe, I guess, on Vince's side where it's like there's a knee-jerk reaction. 
you know, wrestling will never work, you know, publicly owned. And even though it's been working for a long time in its own way, in WWE's way, and they should really take the company back private again. (laughs) Yeah, like those billion dollar deals just fall out of the sky. Like, you know, I mean, that sort of stuff. You can not like the product that WWE produces, but them as a machine, as a company. Sure. If you don't like big business, you can point out all of the flaws that are inside of it, including how they decide to regulate and view their independent contractors as opposed to employees. But it's such a machine and, and any of the, the hand waving and all that stuff that goes on, it's silly. And it's the AEW is never going to be able to catch up. I shouldn't say never, but it is going to take them a ridiculous amount of time to get the footing, to even get remotely close to the level of where WWE is at. And it's just one of those things. It's going to take time, but the monster that WWE is it, this new New Yorker story from the guy that's writing his autobiography, you know, dredging back up the, the Rita Chatterton story, you know, the same way. It doesn't look like it's making a move on anything right now. So strong WWE. Well, we also have to uh, find out what's going on with old Triple H, who uh, last week had a meeting at the uh, at NXT and, and used the term I'm back. But no one knew what that meant. And uh, I can tell you, by the way, that uh, what happened actually last week was he was in he was in town for a birthday party and stopped by. So it was never like a I don't think it was like a planned meeting for him to be there and make an announcement. I think he was there for a birthday, gave the speech, and then made the line about "I'm back." And then he said he couldn't tell anybody what that meant. So I guess we'll see what happens. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. You geeks, tell me you can't hear me over the music. Tell me what you're complaining about. What's the matter? All right. So what I was trying to say. These people say they couldn't hear me because the music was playing. Oh. Fine. Cut the music, Dom. <laughs> Thank you. So what I was saying was, last week, that Triple H story, it's possible it was much ado about nothing. Because it wasn't a scheduled meeting. Like, Triple H was in town for a birthday or something like that. He stopped by and talked to everybody. He dropped the line about how he was back. And then when he was like, I guess he said he couldn't say why he was back or when or any details. So uh, that was it. And apparently he's done similar speeches to this in the past. And, uh, you know, everything's just pretty much the same. It's like Moxie's concussion line, I guess. Kind of. But, I mean, who knows? Maybe he'll be there running the show tonight. But the impression I was given was, you know, he said something and nothing has changed. So... I guess we'll like he literally find popped it. in the door like at the place he used to work like hey guys I'm back and then somebody yeah, he ran showed up with, with a that cake story that's yeah he somebody ran with, with that he story he didn't show there. up with a cake if you report that he showed up with a cake you know what you really should mad. report actually what you should report is he went walking in and he busted open the doors and much like Ted DiBiase at that jeweler when he was looking for his million dollar belt that's how he said I'm back he came in and busted in and instead of saying I'm here he said I'm back he had a full he had a cape on and he had Virgil behind him and everything it was crazy report all that. right brother let me get through this raw report oh, okay it's time for that do you want so to open up with John Cena segment? And uh, it showed up with John Cena showing up, and he said hi to everybody in the back, including Drake Maverick, who I believe is now on the creative team, for those of you asking. And then we had a, a qualifying Money in the Bank qualifying battle royal for the last spot called Last Chance. And so, like, after all of these losses, you get one more chance at the end. And after uh, failing, uh, Riddle ended up winning the battle royal, so he is in Money in the Bank. And uh, most of it was your usual nothing happening, boring battle royal. But the last few minutes with uh, AJ and Riddle, and uh, even even the Miz and Riddle at the end had a decent little segment. And then finally, Miz uh, eliminated or got eliminated, and uh, Riddle is going to Money in the Bank to potentially win the briefcase. And then he could get another shot at Roman Reigns. And given how many people are injured and how few main eventers they have. He probably should win Money in the Bank. They announced just out of the blue, Kevin Owens, Ezekiel, not taking place here tonight. Ezekiel was on the show and uh, talked to John Cena. So whatever it was, it was something involving Kevin Owens. And apparently he's fine and will be back very soon. Maybe even by SmackDown Friday, I guess we shall find out. We had a segment with Cena and the uh, Street Profits. 
And then uh, the strangest thing, which we're going to talk about in the next segment, there were videos from a number of individuals, including The Big Show, Chris Jericho, and Brian Danielson, all on Raw. And these were not archive interviews. These were new. Putting over John Cena's 20 years. So we could talk more about that after the break. Montez Ford beat Jay Uso. So literally, we talked about this weeks ago. They have a tag match. Can you just beat the Usos to set up a tag title match? No. They got to eke out a count out victory. Then they got to do a singles match and lose. Like nobody believes the Street Profits can win. Well, now all of a sudden they figured out that no one believes the Street Profits can win. And now it's a storyline. The Street Profits are all sad with John Cena. We just can't get any wins over these guys. I'm like, oh, you finally figured this out, you idiots. So anyway, they finally got a singles match, and uh, now Montez has gotten a win, and uh, last week Dawkins got a win. So they gave him something en route to them losing at Money in the Bank. We had a Finn Balor-Damian Priest segment with Ray and Dominic where they belittled Ray for being a legend, but his son is a geek, and Ray got mad, and now we're going to have a tag match in San Diego next week. And I just have this feeling, just like Christian Cage and Jungle Boy, old Dom's jumping ship, and he's going to join whatever their group is called. The What are they called? The evolution, the, what's the name of uh, Finn Balor judgment and Damien Priest? The Judgment it, Day. Yeah, that's see, funny. I remember it like it's a pay-per-view. So basically, in this case, is Dominic their Julia Hart? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, at some point, he's, they got to pull the trigger on this bloke. We had a Miz interview in the ring, and uh, he said he was going to team with Logan Paul. And they actually acknowledged, I thought they were going to drop it, but they acknowledged Miz laying him out at WrestleMania. And Miz's excuse is, well, you know, I just teach him a lesson. We're going to win the tag team titles. We're going to be a team, which may very well happen, which tells you how much, you know, I don't know why they laid out Logan Paul at WrestleMania. It was stupid at the time, and it's stupid now. Then we had AJ Styles versus The Miz. Oh, what a fun time we had on Observer Radio talking about this one last night. I thought this match was boring as all hell for about uh, 10 minutes. But I I thought the last three minutes was pretty good. Dave thought it was horrible, like, from start to finish. But anyway, it doesn't matter. They had a match, and uh, AJ hits Miz... I'm not even making this up, with a high-angle brain buster. He lifted this bloke up and dropped the Miz on his head. And at that point, Miz was like, bro, I'm out of here. And he walked to the back and got counted out. Styles bleeding all over. Apparently, they'd have another match, I guess. But uh, I thought the last few minutes were okay. AJ was great. And what? We're all surprised that Miz wasn't very good in the match? That's news now? And we had... uh, it's funny. There was some guy on the board, and uh, and he goes, man, I watched Raw, and when that show was over, to me, there's no way it's John Cena in theory at SummerSlam. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. You watched the show, and that's the conclusion you came to? Dude, they had a theory John Cena confrontation. The crowd actually popped for it. Theory runs down John Cena. John Cena just sits there and listens to him and does these funny facial expressions. And then Theory goes for a a selfie and Cena disappears. And then Theory's furious about it. How does that not lead to a match? Now, I will say that it was weird because John Cena later comes out for his big speech. And literally his speech is, Well, uh, you fans are all awesome. Someday I'm going to be back. I don't know when, but when I do come back, it'll be for more than one match. That was his entire comeback speech that he stretched out over 10 minutes. That was weird. We had a segment with Bianca and and Carmella. Hold on, I'll get to you in a minute. Let me get through this. Bianca and Carmella have a segment, and uh, Bianca's doing a promo. Carmella comes down to the ring. She has zero credibility as a challenger. She tries to jump Bianca. Bianca sends her packing. That's your go-home angle. I was just, whatever. I mean, she was never supposed to be in the match, but, I mean, this is is worse than the Street Profits. We had Alexa Bliss promo with Liv Morgan, 
The dialogue was, I mean, literally, you can't even say the bottom of the barrel. It's like the barrel had no bottom. They, then they dug a hole, and they dropped the dialogue down there. Essentially, Alexa said that she's going to beat Liv tonight. and uh, Or no, Liv said she'd beat Alexa. Alexa didn't believe her. And then Liv beat her. Liv Morgan beat Alexa Bliss with a cradle. And uh, just, oh my God, this whole segment. And it was not Liv Morgan's fault. And it wasn't really Alexa's fault. They just give Alexa the worst dialogue imaginable. And she tries to deliver it, but it's just it's just horrible. Do I have to hear from the Alexa geeks now? Get out of here. Go listen to another show. I don't want to hear from you. We had the John Cena promo. Then we had a two-on-one handicap match. Bobby Lashley versus both of Alpha Academy with uh, Theory as the... Uh, as a special enforcer, Bobby beat them both, submitted, uh, I guess it was Gable with a hurt lock, and then Theory tried to attack him afterwards, and Lashley beat him up three and one. So they're doing a, a hell of a job with Lashley, and quite frankly, I mean, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if uh, if Lashley won, because John Cena's not going to win the U.S. title. I guess it's possible that their idea is that Theory beats John Cena, which, if that's the case, you may as well leave the title on Austin Theory. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that was the idea, that Theory's going to beat Cena. But uh, there's also, you know, it's WWE, so, you know, Theory can get the rub losing to John Cena. But anyway. Cody Rhodes interview in the gym. He's bored, senseless, having to do all this rehab. But he talked about Money in the Bank. He talked about all the wrestlers. And he said, you know what? If uh, if Seth wins that Money in the Bank briefcase and wins the title, I'll be the first to congratulate him. The story is that he might have been able to do Money in the Bank with a torn peck, but because Seth Rollins hit him with a crowbar or a sledgehammer, now he's out nine months. So they're putting all the heat on Seth Rollins for uh, for that injury. And then the main event was a Money in the Bank qualifying elimination match. Becky Lynch, Zia Lee, Nikki, Shayna, Tamina, and Dewdrop. This was the main event of Raw. Becky's eliminating blowcats right and left and just getting the biggest babyface reaction because, you know, she should be a babyface, but, like, they just have to have her be a heel. And they have to have Seth Rollins and his stupid laugh be a heel. But, man, she's just beating all of them. Crowd's going nuts. She finally wins the match. The crowd goes nuts. cheering. They're just cheering like crazy for Becky Lynch. So I guess next week we'll have to have that heel promo where she says, you fans turned on me, and so I don't like you. And anyway, the show was fine. I mean, it was nothing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the show. Certainly, was nothing like blow away about it. It was like your average edition of Raw. But we could talk about whatever Mike wants to talk about after the break, as well as the AEW stars on WWE television. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back at the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Yeah, Mike Semper VV is here. I'm gonna let him say some words in a minute. But first, I have two things I got to say very quickly. Number one, there really ain't a lot to say about uh, Jericho and Big Show and and Daniel Bryan on Raw because, you know, they, I'm sure, cleared it with Tony Khan. He said whatever. He's not a wrestler. I mean, he's a wrestling guy, but he came from sports, and uh, he apparently was fine with that. Now, what? here's the most interesting thing as it relates to this show about that. Somebody messaged me, and they said, Looks like I'm winning the prediction contest because I predicted AEW stars on Raw. Well, those hmm. guys are AEW stars, and they are on Raw. That's true. So, I mean, if nobody else comes close, that is the winner of this year's prediction contest, is these AEW stars on Raw. Now, the only other thing I want to say is somebody asked a question, who do you think is winning Money in the Bank? And uh, my, my uh, knee-jerk reaction was, who cares? It doesn't matter. Because what we have learned is they pick a winner the day of the show and they have like no plan. And then, you know, later it's either like a cash in and they win whatever or it's a failure or like in the case of Otis, it's like, what did we put the title on Otis for? Well, let's do a stupid storyline to, you know, get the get the thing off him and give it to somebody else. Or like Miz cashed in twice a couple of years ago or whatever. He lost it and then he got it back. So it doesn't, it, it, honestly, it doesn't matter. There's no like foresight for the most part. But, but, 
there should be foresight as it pertains to Cody because they have like one storyline, one long term, easy storyline, which is Cody has never won the title. He cannot win it for his father, but he wants to win it and give it to his mother. This is idiot proof. So I feel that like whatever they do with the men's money in the bank should somehow tie into that story. It could be Seth wins, and then you could do uh, Cody and Seth doing a match for the briefcase uh, right before wrestling. There are things that you can do. Or, you know, it could just be Riddle wins, and then Riddle goes on and loses to Roman Reigns again when they don't have a main eventer for whatever big stadium show they're not selling tickets for. Or selling tickets for. Don't want to make people mad. But anyway, uh, don't overthink this this money in the bank because they they just do whatever they're going to do on the day and then they, quote, fix it later. So that's my money in the bank thoughts. Or to not screw up the briefcase and making it weak, you could have Cody win the Rumble and then say, I want to tie up loose ends before I get to WrestleMania and I'm going to get you out of the way with a sledgehammer at whatever it's called, road bump or whatever the hell the, the paper roadblock. And, and then we're going to go on to Mania and I'm going to defeat Roman. But who knows? And I, is Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns looks like that's going to be September? Or are we any closer to seeing Tyson? They pretty much already announced that as the, uh, the castle. Okay, because that's where I wasn't sure where Tyson Fury was at with that, because if the way they are playing things up with Roman Reigns being vulnerable and look, they the stipulations that they added to Riddle seem to help that situation with Randy Orton and he wasn't going to get a crack again and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, Drew winning and, and winning the title on Saturday, you know, wiping after Roman and Brock go at it. That, that's not the worst idea in the world to me because then there's a reason for Roman to be pissed and off of TV. It, I know it breaks up the title reign, but you could go in that direction at least. One more thing on the uh, Jericho big show and Daniel Bryan deal. Um, what does this mean for, uh, for potential re-signings and et cetera? I don't want to read too much into this, obviously. Okay. The Daniel Bryan story, we already know. The Daniel Bryan story, he very much waffled back and forth about whether to go to AEW or whether to stay with WWE. It was a very, very difficult decision for him. So when the time comes and his deal is up, he's probably going to have a very, very difficult decision to make again because he is fine doing sports entertainment. He loves Vince McMahon. Obviously, he's having also the time of his life in AEW, so he'll have to make a decision. But he's not one of those guys where you could say, well, for sure, this guy's never going to even consider going back to WWE. Jericho, I mean, constantly attempting to reinvent himself. And I think that if they, you know, there was a bidding war with Chris Jericho, uh, WWE and AEW. I think that he would consider both sides. I don't think Jericho's one of those guys. It's absolutely, and clearly, by the fact that he sent in a video, I think that he would be open to the idea of returning to WWE if they made him a huge offer and he felt that they would use him right. So uh, there's that. The one that was most interesting to me is is uh, is the big show. And uh, it's just interesting because... I don't, I don't know if he's ever gone public as to why he left, and I don't want to put words into his mouth, but, I mean, he left WWE very shortly after they had that Legends Night deal or whatever, and uh, and they absolutely humiliated him. They made him look like the biggest geek and loser on that show. They called him old. They called him washed up. The heels made fun of him. He got no comeback. He didn't get to do—it was like— Man, I watched that, and then later it turns out he went to AEW, and I was like, well, of course he did. Of course he did. So it's interesting that he wasn't disrespected enough that he didn't want to send in a video here. So listen, don't write stories about I'm saying these guys are going to go back to WWE. I don't have any idea what they're going to do. But I do think it's it's pretty clear from the fact that they sent in videos that they're on decent they're they're clearly on good terms with Vince and WWE and uh I guess it'll be interesting to see what happens when their AEW contracts come up because there there are you know when AEW started 
I heard from so many people, and they were like, man, I'm never. I will never go back to WWE. There is zero chance. It's absolutely not happening. And, uh, you know, now I think that there are more people that are open. And Cody's a large part of that. Open to going to WWE. And uh, if the money is right, and if they think they can be put in a main event position, because WWE is hurting for main eventers, you know, there are people that are going to be willing to go there. So... Just interesting. Well, and anybody that can use it as a negotiating ploy should. There's only so many places you can work. There's only one bigger than the one you are working at if you're AEW. So if there could possibly be interest, you do want to kind of leave those doors kicked open a little bit. Just make sense for your career. One thing I didn't really... I was confused by what you said about John Cena being saying that it was so weird uh, his promo, I thought it was the opposite. I thought it was a very stock John Cena promo where he thanked all the fans. You know, this is about you and me. Every time I succeed, every time I do a new movie, it's us doing it together. And there's going to be one more time where it's about us. And they started chanting one more time. It's not like he said, hey, I'm coming back for one more. But you know what? It's going to be it's going to be more than that. It's because they were chanting one more time and he cut him off. He said, yeah, there's going to be one more. And then said whatever, you know, it's but it's going to be more than that. The the angle they didn't angle with theory where he walks away. They don't want to overshadow what's coming up. So I didn't I don't know why you thought it was strange. I, I may have missed something there, but I thought it was very paint by numbers. Well, it was strange because John Cena is scheduled to work SummerSlam. And so you don't have to shoot the angle. You don't have to do the theory full whatever that night. But, I mean, it's a big show. They advertised it forever. It's, I'm sure it's going to probably do a really big number. I mean, I thought he would at least come out and say, you know, SummerSlam. I don't know who I'm going to face, but I'll be there. Instead, it was like, hey, you know, one of these days I'll be back. I don't know when, I don't know where, it'll be more than one match, but, you know, hey, see you you guys later, and then he just left. That was not what I was expecting. I I guess, yeah, I mean, I didn't really take it as that once they did the angle with Theory in the back where it was okay, now these two are finally face-to-face for the first time, and Theory is obviously laying it into him, and and Cena just walks away from him, and you could say what you, you know, what you want about how they produced that and if that was the right thing to do or not. But I thought it was fine because you do have money in the bank coming up. That's this Saturday. So come Monday, I can see once the deal with Lashley is out of the way, whatever happens with it, that's when we're going to see this thing amped up and see theory. You know, it's going to be obviously more theory than seen on these shows, but having him porting it on as much as he can to lead into whenever Cena comes back, because who knows when Cena is going to be back on Raw again to lead into that. For it says, maybe a stupid question, but how do you feel about them a hug? No, I don't consider that unprofessional. If if you do, that's that's your thing. But uh all right, who dropped? Me? Am I out of here? No, you're there. Hey. I am? You are. You hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you. Why can't uh, the chat hear us anymore? Dom, can you hear us? No, we're back. We're back. That was weird. (laughs) I don't know what happened right there. Anyway, did I answer everybody's question? Maybe the question was so ridiculous that the uh, thing muted. All right. What else do we got? (laughs) I could be wrong, but I was hearing there's still one more spot in the men's ladder match. Is that correct? If so, it really wasn't a last chance battle royal, if that's the case. Well, it was a last chance battle royal, because when the show was booked, it was a last chance for those guys, and they had the match scheduled for the other spot, but that match had to be pulled because whatever happened with Kevin Owens happened. But, yeah, it was still a last chance battle royal. For the people in it, it was their last chance. And yes, I wouldn't be surprised at all. If Kevin Owens can come back, I would presume they're doing Kevin Owens and Elias and whatever they were going to do on SmackDown this week. Because there isn't a... I mean, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Remember when I uh, I was talking about how the uh, the brand extension is, like, you know, essentially done, and then, uh, you know, everyone did stories on it or whatever. And then, I can't remember who it was, but, you know, somebody said, 
Uh, well, what's actually going on is uh, the brand extension isn't dead, but, you know, everyone's going to be going back and forth. <laughs> That's what I said! So anyway, yes, people are just going back and forth on all the shows. I'm sure technically there's still a brand extension. Yes, technically I'm sure on there's paper, still a brand it's still extension. there. But bro, people are on every show. It's essentially done. Bro, it's for Come the on. networks. That's what, Does that's everything what have they, to be about semantics in this world? That's what they say. It's about the networks. The networks wanted separate people. So they can still say that this person is exclusive to you. That's why you're paying us all this money. Stupid. Yeah, how funny is it, by the way? How funny is it that things aren't exclusive anymore? And look at these SmackDown numbers through the stratosphere, and these Raw numbers are huge. And granted, there are other reasons for it. But my point is, it's not like it hurts your numbers because Roman Reigns is going to be on SmackDown, but he can't be on Raw and vice versa. It's almost like having everybody available for both shows makes both shows, like, better. And, uh, you know, uh, God. Everyone's always got some theory. You know what I'm saying? There's always a theory. Well, in theory this, in theory that. Well, as it turns out, wrestling fans like to see more stars on the show than less. Gee, who could have thought? A-Town Down, that you keep talking about. Not that that theory. But the problem is, the thing is, he could be a star right now. And a brand extension could work, even though it's a pain in the ass. But the bottom line is you haven't created enough stars to have a brand split. You barely have enough stars to have one show. So while that is the case, stick with just one Actually, it's funny, Mike. It's funny. You're right and you're wrong. They have more than enough people to do a brand split. But of those people, they have no stars because they don't know how to make a star. So therefore, your brand split is causing more harm than good. Have I yelled enough today? Back in a moment, Observer Live. You know, uh, DJ here made a point. I'm going to try and make an analogy out of it, but I'm sure I'm going to mess it up. No let's say let's say that you got uh, you got two local buffet restaurants, and uh, and you know they're maybe they're uh, uh, they they the same you know truck brings them all the food. You know what I'm it's saying Cisco truck, yes. And uh, and one of them's like, dude, we only want steak here. No fish. And then, like, the other one's like, we only want fish, no steak. So, like, if you like fish, you ain't ever going to the place that has no fish. And if you like steak, you ain't ever going to the place that has no steak. So the two buffets, you know, they, they, they're they limiting the number of people that are going to come into their buffet. Whereas if they both feature steak and fish, then if you live in the town... Well, whichever one's closer, whichever one your buddy, you'll go to both of them. That's the stupid brand split. Oh, well, we want an exclusive roster of half your stars. Oh, wow, what a great idea. An exclusive roster of half the stars. So you see the same matches over and over again. You never get to see half of the big stars. That's a great idea. And then here we are, and now, you know, everyone's on every show. And lo and behold... WWE is doing significantly better than they've been doing for a while. Let me guess. Oh, it's because of this or that? Well, I'm sure there are other factors at work as well. But what I can tell you is it certainly has not hurt Fox to have their guys go to Raw and have the Raw guys go to Fox. And it certainly hasn't hurt Raw and the USA Network for the Fox guys to go to Raw and vice versa. But in theory... Mike's solo tomorrow. He's had enough of me. I'm sure you all have as well. But too bad. If you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, I'm back tonight. I'm back tomorrow. You'll never get rid of me. I'll never retire. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.